So next up, we have Active Port Group, ASX code ATV. The company is delivering software-defined networking solutions tailored to the global telecommunications and IT sectors. Presenting for the company today is Chairman Peter Christie. Peter, thanks for your time. Over to you. Hi, Abby. Thanks, and, and great to be back on Share Cafe. Uh, today, uh, when, when I speak to technical audiences, we talk about the technical benefits of active port software. Uh, but for audiences like this, where it's primarily an investor audience, I like to talk about the investment qualities of active port software. Um, and so when you think about what distinguishes a good software investment, um, there are three things that I always focus on. First of all, a broad market. A, a good software product has to have a broad global market to ensure there's a depth of opportunities to generate strong revenue growth for many, many years in the future. Um, a good software product has what we call a high ARPU, so a high average revenue per user or per customer. Um, obviously, there's a cost of acquisition for customers in software, and the higher the revenue you're earning per customer, uh, the more profitable the software product is likely to be. Uh, and then recurring revenue. Uh, a good software product or a good software investment uh, has to have a very strong recurring revenue base and, and a re recurring revenue base with limited churn so that that recurring revenue is sticky and, and continues to grow and compound over the years. And I think those three features make um, a software investment positive uh, and, and highly lucrative. And you can see that in, in good software companies around the world that trade at eight to 10 times revenue uh, if they're delivering all these uh, features to their investors. And so when we think about how Active Port uh, measures up in this space, um, the markets that Active Port software sells to is the telecommunications market and the data center market. Uh, those customers use our product for automating network services and automating access to data centers and also for um, some specialist activities in cloud gaming. Uh, we are one of the leading developers of software uh, that underpins the emerging cloud gaming market. And we are finding because of that uh, experience and expertise that we are uncovering more and more opportunities in the AI sector uh, because it similarly uses GPUs as a deployment platform. Uh, for those applications. And so across the active port ecosystem, those industries collectively have a $4, billion, a $4 trillion um, addressable market. The telco industry alone is $2.2 trillion globally. Uh, there are 750 tier one telcos uh, that we sell to, and they are all potential customers of active ports. And there are thousands of data centers out there and obviously the, the gaming and AI markets are emerging. And so a $4 trillion target addressable market is a significant opportunity for us. Our revenue per user or per point of presence is $2,250 as a minimum, and it grows from there. And so our revenue per user is very, very high. When you compare that to some other more consumer-oriented products that may have a, a, a revenue per user of maybe 2 or $3. So $2,250 US dollars per user is a significant number. Uh, our contracts a minimum five years, but our relationship with our telco customers and data center operators is so deep that we expect these relationships, once struck, uh, can extend for decades into the future. And our revenue per customer is typically from half a million dollars to a million dollars on average. Some of the larger telcos around the world that we're deploying at the moment could extend up to five, six, seven, eight, nine, even $10 million per year in recurring revenue. And so active port, if you think about those three features that make a software business and an attractive investment, I think, uh, ticks the boxes across the board. Uh, if you just talk quickly about our origins, Active Port is a very new business. We launched in uh, 2021 on the ASX. Uh, this year, we're targeting $7 million of recurring revenue. When we launched in 2021, I think investors need to keep in mind that we had no software revenue. In the first year, after IPO, we delivered $300,000 of software revenue, then $1.2 million of software revenue, and then $6 million of software revenue. And so the, the acceptance of our software product in the telco sector has been exceptional, and the growth rate in that recurring revenue base has been significant. So in the current year, we're targeting $7 million of, of underlying recurring revenue run rate. Um, and then... To deliver that, we have a $44 million pipeline of opportunities that we're dealing with at the moment. And so we think we've got plenty of uh, 
capacity to make sure that we hit that, that revenue run rate target. Our total revenue for the year we're chasing somewhere between 11 and $20 million. Uh, that includes other non-recurring items, but the recurring revenue growth is really the focus for this year. Uh, what does our software do? Well, we cloud enable networks. The telco industry is uh, somewhat lagging behind the compute and storage industry for cloud. Today, you can buy a customer, enterprise customer, uh, can buy compute and data storage online from AWS, uh, from, from Google, from Microsoft, uh, but you can't buy a, a network from a major telco online very easily. They just, it's still a very, very manual process. The telcos around the world realize that this is a problem, that they need to come into the current century, they need to cloud enable their networks, and our software is the fastest path for a telco to, to deliver that cloud enablement. We do that by, first of all, installing our software in the telco network, we, we connect it to the core switches that run their network so that we can automate the provisioning of network services. And then we connect the software into their back office systems, uh, service desk, customer service, billing, et cetera, to make sure that the product can fully automate the telco's operation from end to end. Um, we call that orchestration and network automation. Once we've cloud enabled a telco's uh, network and back office functions, we can present that to the telco's enterprise users as a self-service portal. So just like they buy compute and storage from, from Amazon and, and Microsoft and Google today, customers can now purchase network services from traditional telcos around the world through a portal online immediately. Instead of the old way, which is manually via phone, uh, a telco with our software can deliver a network service in minutes. Most telcos today can take six to eight weeks. Uh, if we think about other features of, of software products that make them attractive, uh, I like to talk about momentum and moats. Um, active port software is quite unique in the telco industry today. We don't find a lot of competition. And so we're working very, very hard to deliver the software to as many telcos as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, you can see from the, the map that we have a significant and broad deployment of our software across a number of telcos around the world. A lot of these installations start at a very low revenue run rate. We do a lot of work to integrate the product into the telcos, but you can see from this user base that we can then grow the revenue over time, and that revenue should just build and compound over the next five to 10 years. And so we think that the more telcos we can deploy quickly, the bigger the, the moat that we can build around the product, because we, we do have uh, a significant lead on any other competition in the market at the moment, um, that will build the moat. And we think that we've got the momentum to get there uh, over the next three years. Uh, so how are we doing? Well, we started in 2021, our first full year of reporting, we had $11 million of revenue. This year we had $15 million of revenue. So over the three year period, our revenue growth has been quite solid. Um, once we achieved traction with our software, we started to pivot away from some of the older revenue um, that we had in the business that wasn't related to the software and is lower margin. So you can see that we, we, we had a, a revenue ramp in the first two years, and then we started to focus more uh, in the third year on just the software revenue. And our software revenue delivers 92% gross profit uh, versus some of the older revenue that had uh, less than 50% gross profit, in some cases less than 30%, uh, and certainly lower EBITDA. And so we're really pivoting towards that high growth, high margin software revenue, which means we're not chasing top line uh, revenue at this point. But what you can see from the graph is that we're delivering a profit. And so we went from a, a negative $5 million uh, performance in our first full year of reporting as we established the business uh, we've optimized our, our uh, delivery base and our resource base over the last two years to make sure that we're now chasing very high margin revenue, good, solid recurring revenue with high EBITDA. And you can see that reflected in the numbers here where we, we delivered a million dollars uh, EBITDA this year. And if you look at our free cash flow or our cash flow statement for FY24, you can see that did translate into positive cash flow as well, which is very, very important. Um, to make active porter a, a, a significant or a good investment uh, for our investors. And so our FY25 uh, focus is recurring revenue. We really are looking to build out that recurring revenue base. We've got some fantastic 
um, projects. We, we just signed Telecom Malaysia. Uh, I was in Seoul at the GSM 360 conference. Uh, Vicky Brady from Telstra was there as well. Uh, most of the senior telco executives from Southeast Asia were at that conference. Uh, we took the opportunity to have an official signing uh, an agreement between ourselves and, and one of our channel partners, uh, Radian Arc, with Telecom Malaysia. Uh, Telecom Malaysia will use our software to deliver uh, network automation, uh, AI orchestration, uh, data center automation, and cloud gaming. And so they're using the full suite of our capacity across our, of our software across a number of different projects. Uh, and so we're very excited about that. And we have similarly large projects in other countries around the world. In particular, we're tr we are working on some exciting projects in Australia that we hope to announce in the next few weeks. And all of those projects should deliver uh, very, very sound recurring revenue that compounds quickly. Uh, and that will make sure that we can, we, can, we can continue to deliver positive free cash flow. Uh, one of the great things about a software investment is that once we get our recurring revenue base above our fixed costs, the free cash flow that we can generate is significant because we're almost a zero capex business. Um, to, to license software to a telco, we don't operate it. We don't provide the computer that it runs on. The telco uh, provides that in-house. And so our CapEx is almost zero, which means every month's license revenue as a, as a software provider is all, almost 100% uh, net profit. So positive cash flow is important for us. And of course, product development. We're doing a lot of work uh, engineering our product uh, we're, we're rolling out uh, some AI features at the moment because we're seeing a lot of demand coming through for AI applications um, built on some of the foundation models that are now quite mature. And so product development is very important for us as well. Uh, Abby, with that, questions? Lovely. Um, so thanks for your presentation, Peter. So could you mention a few of your customers? Uh, yes, we have um, the... Five largest telecommunications carriers in India are all using our software, either uh, for GPU orchestration for gaming and, and some AI functions, which is an emerging uh, revenue opportunity for us, or for network orchestration, which is really our core business. Uh, Telecom Malaysia, as I mentioned, uh, we have some projects that we will announce shortly in Australia. One in particular is with a new uh, fiber constructor uh, that's very, very exciting. It's, it's almost the new style of telco around the world and so partnering with them would be fantastic. Uh, we are working very hard to win some new business in the Middle East at the moment uh, and we have the, we're, we've got some budding and quite exciting projects in North America and so our, our telco customers, we, we target the top five telcos in every country as our immediate audience uh, we're, we're really focused in Southeast Asia, India, and the Middle East at the moment because they're close to home uh, and we'll branch out to Europe and North America in the next 18 months. And Peter, why is the main focus on the telco industry in particular? So it seems your software may be useful in many more other industries. Yes, yeah, so the software in its essence orchestrates network equipment and compute capacity that uses GPUs. And so... On the network side, obviously the biggest operators of network are the major telcos. Um, on the compute side, within that telco environment, uh, on the consumer side of a telco, cloud gaming is emerging, just like um, CD and DVD went to the cloud with services like Netflix, gaming will move away from consoles and PCs into a cloud basis as well. And the telcos have got the biggest audience for that. Uh, our, our addressable market on our cloud gaming software across the telcos have already committed to use the product, and there's 80 of them now. It's just under 3 billion mobile phone consumers, and so that's a fantastic market for us. Uh, and then the telcos also, uh, because they have the capital base to do it, are investing a lot in GPUs for AI. And so those three uh, functions for us, network automation, obviously a telco market, um, data centers, a telco market, gaming, a telco market, and then AI, also a, a telco-driven market. That's the, They're the four things we focus on. And the fastest way and the best way for us to get to those customers is through the major telcos in each country. Thank you. So could you comment on the competitive landscape for the sort of software that you're creating? 
Uh, strangely enough, there's not a lot of competition. When we started to build the product, there were competitive products in network orchestration. Most of them were bought by hardware manufacturers uh, like Cisco and Juniper and Nokia and the like, and, and then they, they become sort of embedded within those organisations, become less competitive. Uh, so for, the, for our core target market for our foundation product, which is telco, uh, we have very limited competition that has the feature set and the hardware agnostic capability that we have to operate a lot of, uh, across a lot of different hardware vendors in the telco ecosystem. And finally, in terms of R&D, can you mention any new products you're working on or any significant updates you're looking at for existing products? Uh, yes, yeah, so in cloud gaming, we're working on what we call version three of our gaming platform, which is quite exciting. The cloud gaming market for us is focused in countries where uh, the kids are typically not, don't have access to PlayStation and Xbox, but they have uh, low cost 5G phones. And so we've got to hit an ARPU point that's competitive in those markets. And I think we're there. And, and so for markets like Indonesia or India, that's important. Um, so, so the development we're doing there is exciting. If, if you look at the AI industry, applications for AI are becoming more and more uh, relevant. Uh, there's more and more of them appearing for things like service desk, et cetera. For us to deliver orchestration for AI applications at scale across distributed infrastructure for telcos anywhere in the world, it's actually a simpler task from a technical perspective than what we're doing in gaming today. And so we're, we're adapting our product very, very quickly to the cloud gaming orchestration, uh, sorry, the AI orchestration market. We're finding that's a real growth sector for us at the moment. Peter, thank you so much for your time. What a great presentation. Um, we'll be keeping a close eye on the company and I hope you have a lovely weekend. Thanks, Abby. Appreciate it.